Fueled by the COVID-19 pandemic, anti-Asian racism is on the rise. Major cities across Canada are experiencing an increase of hate crimes that are at times six to seven hundred percent higher than previous years. Politicians spread the lies that they call it the China virus. People thought that we, Asians, brought the virus with us, even though I've been here 50 years ago. From smallpox to SARS to today's coronavirus, every outbreak has sparked its own wave of anti-Asian racism. It reinforced this belief that Asian people bring about disease. Same with SARS, that was the same issue, and now we're seeing it again with the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 is, is actually another one of those situations uh, where uh, the concept of yellow peril was brought back in association with a virus. What is yellow peril? This idea that Asian people are seen historically as a threat uh, to the welfare, the health, the well-being of Canada or other westernized countries. Both implicit and explicit bias against uh, cultural practices that people may think are the ones to blame for the outbreak in many communities, right? Yellow Peril first became a source of social tension when the Chinese arrived in North America during the gold rush of the 1850s. These racist stereotypes further spread in Canada when the Chinese laborers arrived to build the Canadian Pacific Railway. Seen as an Asian invasion, this migration stoked unfounded fears of Asians as job stealers, as being immoral, and filthy threats to Canadian society. Once the railway was completed, yellow peril sentiment led to the Chinese head tax, where Chinese were charged as much as $500, the equivalent of two years' salary as a way to discourage their immigration. By 1923, nearly all Chinese immigration to Canada was banned under the Chinese Exclusion Act. Yellow Peril also drew racial hostility towards other immigrant groups like the Japanese and South Asians. In 1908, the Continuous Journey Regulation was added to the Immigration Act. This amendment declared that immigrants must come directly from their country of citizenship. This essentially put a halt to South Asian immigration, as trips from these regions required multiple stops. Meanwhile, during the same period, Canada accepted European immigrants at levels that are still unsurpassed to this day. Throughout this time, fear-based propaganda reinforced the image of Asians as immoral, unclean, and unfit for citizenship. Built as safe havens from racism, Chinatowns were meanwhile also labeled as places of filth and disease. The Chinese quarters are the filthiest and most disgusting places in Victoria, an ulcer spreading to the whole city. During World War II, the fear of Japanese invasion propelled the fear of the Yellow Peril to new heights. Fears and distrust of Japanese Canadians along the West Coast labeled them as enemy aliens and spies. Uh, we were a threat uh, to the Canadian government. There was a conspiracy kind of theories that going about. And uh, the kind of thinking at the time was that the Japanese were going to come and invade Canada. The Japanese were moved away from the West Coast. Under the War Measures Act, 22,000 Canadians of Japanese origin were uprooted, sent to internment camps and forcibly relocated. While their property was seized, and sold to pay for their own internment. Whatever you had uh, was uh, confiscated. I can recall going to uh, Hastings Park, where it was a sort of a, a center a, where everybody was um, housed, and each, each family had a stall, a horse stall from the Hastings Park race, Raceway. The football field that was there was a, a whole uh, group of cars and vehicles that were confiscated were all lined up there that it was also the same with the fishing boats at Richmond and Steveston, uh, where all these boats were confiscated. We, in our family, felt that we thought we were going to come back to Vancouver. We left a lot of, the, of our chattels within the, the homes that we were in. And then after the, uh, some time, we tried to claim that. And they said, no, there was no, nothing left here. 
and that it, that some occupants have taken over as, as a rental property. By the end of the war, nearly 4,000 citizens and Canadian-born Japanese were exiled, while the remaining population would be displaced to inland regions in Canada. Throughout this dark period, representation in media and newspapers cast Asians as villains or animals with slanted eyes and exaggerated yellow skin tone. A popular image was that of Dr. Fu Manchu, a super predator seeking world domination and vengeance against the West. This menacing stereotype only further portrayed Asians as untrustworthy, sneaky, and conniving. In the form of systemic racism, these fears still influence today's immigration policies and access to citizenship for certain groups. Canada's economy needs the workers. It's, it's a regular, chronic, and historical need, but the solution has always been temporary to the detriment of the workers, not to the employers. Even before the global pandemic, scapegoating of Asians as predatory buyers in creating a housing crisis, and notions of Asian students taking over college campuses reinforce the idea of an evil foreign power that is invading our way of life. At its worst, Yellow Peril drives the blaming of Asian Canadians for the global pandemic. The COVID ça fait juste encore euh, exacerber la discrimination qu'il y avait déjà envers les Chinois, puis ça leur donne une excuse pour légitimer encore euh, Le racisme s'est trouvé euh, la faute chez l'immigrant. This false narrative has emboldened racism to a degree where hate crimes are being committed against individuals and the Asian Canadian community. Je pense que j'ai tellement peur en fait que j'agis par prévention. Je, je, en fait, je me cache. Puis quand je croise des gens, ben je, je, je rentre la tête. Je pense que juste le fait de se poser la question est-ce que je dois me cacher ou pas, ben il y a un problème. Today, across major cities, Asian groups have taken to the streets to make their voices heard in the fight against anti-Asian racism. You can't be complacent. Nothing's going to happen. If you're complacent, stand up and speak up and condemn whoever is responsible. While the government has repeatedly denounced anti-Asian racism, tangible action and fundamental systemic change is needed. Places of power and influence when they are silent, then they are actually keeping other people silent. Public systems have a moral and material responsibility to actually to speak out against it. If we don't start the discussion, who will? <laughs>